Alright guys, I just thought I would do a review of the um, Clark Chainsaw Sharpener. Uh, I've put off buying one of these for <laughs> well over a year. Uh, my way of dealing with you know, sharpening chains is the, the lazy way is normally buying chains, as you can see here. Yeah, so the one I've done a little bit of research on these, and the one I uh, went for uh, was, I don't know, probably a mid-range, or well, not even a mid-range, lower, lower to mid-range sort of sharpener. And um, this is the Clark ECSS2 sharpener. Uh, it cost me fifty pounds from Amazon. Um, right, so when the kit, when you get it, uh, you get this black part, which is all pre-assembled, and then this this red part comes loose in the kit. Now all you need to do with this, uh, there's a little screw in the bottom here. This just simply fits on there, and then we tighten tighten the little uh, screw in the bottom. allows that to swivel. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. Yeah, the only thing I would say that it, you're best off uh, fixing it to some sort of bench. All I've done is, you know, two screw holes there, just screwed it to the bench. Um, and that, that's it, done. But you could uh, get a, four, a bit of 4 by 2 or something, screw it to that permanently, and then just use a couple of clamps, you know, so it's uh, mobile then. Um, you know, just clamp it to the bench as you need it. Right, now comes the part I was worried about uh, when I got this, or when I sort of researched them. It just looked hell of a complicated to me, all this, you know, setup and different settings and stuff, but it's really easy. Uh, the first thing you need to determine is the angle of your cutting, the teeth on your chainsaw. Um, you can read your manufacturer instructions for the chain, or the chainsaw, you know, it'll, it'll give you the, the degrees that you need to sharpen at. Um, in this case, I'm using an Oregon chain, and it's a 30 degree cut. So what we need to do, you can see this little gauge here, if you can have it. It's from 0 to 35 on both sides. So first thing you need to do, uh, we've determined it's 30 degrees, so we just move the gauge to 30 degrees in this case. And we'll tighten this back up. Okay, so that's the correct angle set. So now what we need to do is actually lay the chain in here. I'll show you how to do that now. It simply lays in here. Just lift this little tab up here, slide your chain in, and you'll find it. You'll know it's in right when you can spin it, you know, like a normal chainsaw. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is set the distance that the wheel comes down in the mount you want to take off the tooth. Yeah, so the way you set the, the depth of cut against the tooth is if you can see the chain moving here, this part here actually stops stops the chain, this part here, which is the tooth which, which we're going to sharpen. Now here's an adjustment here which moves this back. I'll just turn that, you can see that. Obviously that moves the chain back, you know, from the cutting wheel. So what you need to do is move it back like that. Take the wheel down. Um, I'll change my filming angle just now. Okay, so we've got this set up. Here's the adjuster here. We take the grinding disc down. And um, you can see that's just too far, probably about half a millimetre away from the wheel here. So we just need to screw this tight enough a little bit. As I turn this here, the chain's moving that way into the grinding wheel, which then cuts, uh, will grind the tooth. So it's just touching there and no more. It's just grazing it. Um, so we'll give it a tiny little bit more. Now see that's enough, it's just just grazing and no more. Okay, so we've adjusted how much we want to take off each tooth. Uh, the next thing to do is to adjust the depth, which is the distance the, the grinding disc travels down the way. So obviously you don't want to grind into the link, so what you need to do is just lay it on top of the link there. And there's a screw on top of the machine. Okay, so here's the depth adjuster here, uh, which we'll, I'll show you how to use in a minute. So basically we're just going to turn that and that adjusts the height of the, the cutting wheel, you know, up and down. It's a very simple mechanism, you know, as we're screwing from the top, it, it moves the threaded bar down. And it'll hit here, you know, to we'll see if I can film that. Yeah, you see the bar in there. Um, the further we screw that, the, we can adjust the, the height there. Right, so I've got the wheel down as far as it goes at the moment, so we need to obviously adjust the screw. 
Uh, so I'll just turn this. You can see it moving down ever so slightly. So just keep turning. That's it laying on top of the link now, but I'll just take it back slightly. There we are, so that's perfect. So the depths, the depths right, yeah, the amount we want to take off is each tooth right. So that's us set, we're ready to go. Right, before I demonstrate how to actually sharpen the chain with this machine, uh, one thing I would say about it, it doesn't have a light, uh, which I found really annoying, you know, because I like to see what I'm doing uh, when I'm grinding the teeth. Uh, so I've just sort of improvised here with, with an old uh, desk lamp. You know, so that's what I'm using, uh, just to shine on the area where I'm going to be cutting and grinding. Right, so we've set set the amount we want to take off each tooth, we've set the depth, now we're ready to sharpen the chain. So, we've got the chain in position. You just need to lock it off and then sharpen the tooth. This is another downside of this machine, I would say. That, you know, on every tooth, it's got, you know, you need to lock that off, uh, which is a bit time consuming. But once you get into a rhythm, it's, it's okay. Uh, the other ones I've seen when you actually move the grinding head down, the, the more expensive ones actually clamp the chain automatically, so you don't need to keep loosening and tightening this. But again, for the money, it's it's, it's not a big deal. Okay, so I'll switch it on now for you just to let you see how quiet it is. Uh, so, as I said, here's the, the stop start button here at the top. So we'll push it on. That's it on, I'm assuming you can hear that, but it's fairly quiet. Um, it runs fairly smoothly. And we'll just put it off. Okay, so we'll start sharpening, we've got everything set. Now we just uh, a little bit like that, that's all you need. Loosen this off. Pull to the next tooth, which is here. Tighten this up again. Again. That's it. That's all it needs. Listen. Tighten. That's it. Just continue like that until you know all the, the teeth. Are done in this chain. I will just say, I know I forgot to mention, but you're, what you're doing is doing every second tooth in a chain for a chainsaw. So we'll have the angle set. I'll just lift this up 30 degrees, which puts this across this way. Every second tooth. So you do them all. You can either count the teeth or mark it with a, a sharpie pen or a bit of paint. Okay, so a good tip before you start grinding is obviously to mark the first link. Uh, what I normally use is something like this, a white marker, so just a little dab of white on there. Um, that just indicates our start point. So obviously when we're, you know, sharpening the chain, here's our start point here coming round. Then we know where to stop, obviously, so just a quick tip there. Okay, so once you've done all all your teeth uh, running this way, then you need to go underneath again, loosen off the, the screw. Then what we're going to do is move this gauge to 30 degrees on the opposite side, which you can see roughly there, and tighten up. <coughs> Okay, so now we've got the guide running this way, which will enable us to sharpen the, the other teeth in the chain. So just to recap, uh, we'll have the, ang the angle running this way, sharpen half the teeth. Once you've done that, switch it, angle running this way, and that will allow you to sharpen the, the other half of the teeth. Okay, so we've got the chain running the other way now, so just again, hopefully you don't need to adjust anything, it's all set already. So again, get the tooth in position, just a quick, tiny little skim. That's it, that's all it needs. Loosen this off. Our next tooth here. Tighten this up. Down we go. That's it. 
all it needs. That's it. As you can see, you soon get into a rhythm. Um, walk us off, you just get in the habit of doing it. And honestly, within five minutes, you can have the whole chain sharpened. Okay, so obviously what this machine doesn't do, um, when it sharpens your teeth here, it doesn't adjust the rakers. Um, so technically, after I would say after two or three times of sharpening the chain in this method, you would need to file these rakers down slightly. Okay, so here's our typical chainsaw tooth, which is here. The cutting portion of the tooth is here in this corner and down this edge here. And here's your raker or depth gauge. Um, now all teeth are angled slightly downwards, as you can see there. So if you can imagine grinding away at this edge, the more you grind, the lower this edge will get. Which then means that the, the raker or depth gauge could be sitting level or above uh, you know, the cutting edge, which you know, render, the, render the chain useless. <coughs> so normally there's a, a, a gap between the, the tip of this depth gauge here and the, the top of the, the tooth here. Um, I'll, I'll show you a diagram now just to, to indicate what I mean. So, yeah, so once you've ground this down and it starts to get lower and lower, this is the part that you need to grind down, uh, which is the raker. Um, you can obviously buy guides. I don't have one yet. I have, I have ordered one. Um, it's only about three or four pounds. Where you slip the guide over here, this part of the raker will protrude above it, and then you just get a flat file and file the, the top off. Um, and that will that'll give you the gap. Uh, required uh, between the, the top of the raker and the top of the, the tooth. Um, it's probably easier to see than, than trying to explain. I will link, uh, there's a guy on YouTube, there's a video that uh, gives you a good explanation. I'll link that in the description. Uh, it's worth having a look at that if you're, if this is confusing you in any way. But I mean, it's, pre it's pretty straightforward. Here's your cutting edge, here's the raker, which is slightly below the top of the cutting edge, which allows the depth of cut uh, when you're using the chainsaw. That, that's it in a nutshell, really. Yeah, so as I've mentioned, once you get the gauge, uh, the gauge will cover the, the cutting edge of the tooth. It'll, you'll, there'll be a slot here where the, the raker protrudes above it, if it, you know, if there's not any need to come off. So obviously the bit that's protruding above the slot there, you just use a flat file like this. Just gently rub that and it wouldn't take much, just a few rasps like that and it would probably be done. Um, it is important just to, for optimum performance of your chain. Um, so if you can imagine getting all the depths of cut the same for every single tooth all the way around the chain, it's just going to run a lot smoother um, and can ultimately cut a lot quicker. Okay. Yeah, I would certainly recommend one. Um, as I say, if you've got any queries or you know any difficulty setting it up, please just leave it in the comments or email me and I'll be more than happy to respond. Uh, I'm no expert when it comes to chainsaws, believe me, but um, I mean, this is so easy to set up, so easy to use. Um, I would certainly recommend it. Alright guys, well hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you like the video, as always, give it a thumbs up please. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel, that would be much appreciated as well. Um, and we'll see you in the next one hopefully guys. Okay, thank you. Cheers.